As Americans turn the corner towards the final presidential debate on Wednesday, the election circus has devolved into personal attacks and character assassination rather than any real focus on the issues plaguing the United States. The media outlets did not even attempt to confirm the most basic facts because even a simple investigation would have shown that these were nothing more than false smears. Facing an avalanche of new accusations from women who are coming forward to claim he kissed and fondled them. Six women are going public today with stories that echo what Trump himself said in that notorious hot mic video. He called this woman Miss Piggy. Her it. name Where is Alicia Machado. Trump spoke out about those claims on Fox News. And she was the worst we ever had. The worst, the absolute worst. And, uh, you know, she gained a massive amount of weight. And uh, it was it was a real problem. Regardless of the fact that Obama's unconstitutional open border policy is quietly responsible for killing as many as 7,500 Americans every year, 20 on average per day, due to the hordes of illegal drivers flooding the roads, while Obama creates a pilot program to have Americans pay for Syrian refugees to come to the United States and move into our homes. Regardless of the fact that food stamp participation has increased by 78% over the past 10 years, regardless of the fact that Obama and Hillary's new Cold War rhetoric amplified by a suicidal mainstream media has obliterated any shred of integrity 6% of Americans still think cable-fed propaganda media has after polls revealed America is almost completely done with the mainstream media. Mainstream media's stranglehold of propaganda desperation and damage was palpable on the campaign trail as if its demise was what truly concerns Americans, but obviously has panicked the ruling elite. He doesn't have the temperament, he doesn't have the knowledge, he doesn't seem to have the interest in acquiring the knowledge or the basic honesty that a president needs to have. And that was true before we heard him talking about how he treats women. This is not something that we can ignore. It's not something we can just sweep under the rug as just another disturbing footnote in a sad election season. Because this was not just a lewd conversation. This wasn't just locker room banter. This was a powerful individual speaking freely and openly about sexually predatory behavior and actually bragging about kissing and groping women, using language so obscene that many of us were worried about our children hearing it when we turn on the TV. You know, she made a powerful speech. They said it was the greatest speech of, of the decade, I think. She's speaking to everyone out there who respects women and saying, put your politics aside for a second and be able to call something that's indefensible, indefensible, and that's what his behavior is about. Put your politics aside for a second. Online news is the future, and Washington, D.C. knows it. Six in ten Americans are getting their news from social media alone, while one in five households has dropped Cable's buffet of news propaganda to research digital options and think for themselves. Mainstream media, with its hubris as shallow and obvious as the corporate government criminals it represents, appears to be breathing its last gasp. John Bound for Infowars.com. 22 days, ladies and gentlemen, 22 days. Well, WikiLeaks is not disappointing. We salute them. Every two days, they're releasing giant data dumps of thousands of emails. Each revelation, each data dump, more over the top than the last. Today, I was sitting there this morning reading some of the earlier leaks from the week and going over them myself, deciding to kind of collate uh, just a few dozen of the seven, eight thousand that are out there that we're all desperately trying to go through that the uh, White House and others haven't even denied are accurate. They're saying, no, it's criminal to read these on air and no one should look at them. And it's the top Democrats meeting, thanking God the American people are so stupid and they talk about how to keep us in the dark and how to keep us dumbed down. And then that ties into this latest Podesta email where you have the San Bernardino Islamic attack and he's there talking to his aide and they're going, oh no, it's not a white guy. Commence cover up, commence cover up, commence cover up. 
the level of racial politics is over the top. They bring in these Muslims. They go to Muslim training camps and come back. The FBI is ordered to not investigate this very husband and wife pair. They attack, and for two days the FBI was told, we knew this, it came out in the news, to say it wasn't terror and wasn't Islamic State, even though they pledged allegiance to, to Islamic State. I mean, this is how, this is how crazy and out of control all of this has gotten. But now we have the email where they're there basically manipulating and controlling the media. I mean, there are thousands of emails where they're telling the media what to do and controlling the New York Times. We already know this by watching the news, by reading the New York Times, but wow. Clinton campaign email outline effort to, quote, produce an unaware and compliant citizenry. And this is one email that has not gotten any mainstream MSN coverage. And there's so many others like it coming out that are cold-blooded, where these are not ideologues. In my view, this is criminal talk, where you're even telling your aides, in fact, that's in the email, we're horrible people, we do horrible things. And we all agree that's what we do. So we've got to increase what we're doing. I mean, I can read to you what they say again here. And as I've mentioned, we've all been quite content to demean government, drop civics, and in general conspire to produce an unaware and compliant citizenry, he writes. He goes on to say race war is what's needed. Can't make it up. He says everything we're doing is not working anymore. The think tank recommends we go to pure cultural warfare. That's from a year ago. You can see the cultural warfare. They came out on Friday, Hillary Clinton's spokeswoman, and attacked Donald Trump, yours truly, and Steve Bannon. They said, oh, it's very dangerous to listen to Alex Jones. It's very, it's definite that Trump is reading right from Jones's playbook. No, he's actually doing his own research and has the former head of defense intelligence advising him, which might as well be me. Because I know what I'm talking about. I do research. I don't put out what I want to put out. I put out the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because my credibility is all I got. And I'll never give it up for anybody. Quote Tony Montana, there's only two things you got in this world, your word and your huevos, and I ain't breaking them for nobody. You got my word. That I will never deceive you, never lie to you, and I will always tell you the absolute truth that we can come up with. And we all see through rose-colored glasses. As the Bible says, we all have distortions, we all have prejudices, let's not lie about it. But I am really trying to be honest with you, as honest as I can. By the way, it's a lot easier to just be honest, because I don't have to try to keep track of stuff. I just tell the truth, move on. You'll hear me say something five years ago, it's the same thing now. Because it's just going with the facts. Now... There is so much to hit today. We've got a bunch of WikiLeaks we didn't get to on Friday. We've got the new one that came out today. We've got them conspiring to keep with the EU, that's who runs immigration in England, Michael Savage and thousands of others from being able to fly into the country because they wanted to set a model for if they don't like your politics, you can't travel, you can't have a job. I mean, that's what the Nazis did. And there it is, topofdrudgereport.com, World Net Daily, Sharia law, Clinton kept Savage on hate list. Clinton kept Savage on hate list so he couldn't travel because it's a beta test. And a lot of fools out there go, I don't care. I don't care. I mean, I know a lot of talk show hosts are like, oh, good. I hope, yeah, I hope Limbaugh has a heart attack. I hope all these old guys go away. That gives us a shot at the future. That is mindless thinking, folks. Like, like when someone has something bad happen to them, you somehow get ahead. They get away with this. We all lose our rights, folks. That's why they were persecuting Michael Moore for his speech. I would stand up for him, even if I disagree with his speech. But notice, they don't agree with our speech. They want to shut our speech down, and that's in all the emails. It's in the emails from a month ago, over a month ago, that Soros wants to use the U.N. takeover of the Internet that was coming up. This was a year ago. came out a month ago. The U.N. takeover happened 16 days ago. And he said, once the U.N. takes over, we want to start restricting speech using these models. And now they've got Khan, the Islamic mayor of London, saying, you're not going to have bathing suits on the sides of your advertising, and we're going to imp implement Sharia law, and I don't apologize for it. And then he comes here and lectures Americans on how we have to accept all this. These people are naked, flaming criminals, in my view. Now, 
before I get to the big news of the day, I want to break something down. I was here working most of the day yesterday and today because we got 22 days out of the election. This is a world-changing election. It's a referendum on nationalism versus globalism, Americanism versus tyranny. And the liberty movement has broken through. People are understanding, just like they did in the UK, that they were under EU control, the same globalist unelected system. Magic things are happening right now. But I had a late lunch. I went to a local sports bar that has decent uh, food that's close to the office. And I watched for about 45 minutes while I ate all these men not having conversations with their wives and children, all watching different football screens and coming over to me and asking me what I thought of football. And I realized, talk about echo chamber. They are in their own world. Our country's being robbed by offshore mega banks that admit they want to destroy our economy and consolidate control, break up the family and make us total serfs. They're starting a huge war with Russia. I'm going to get to after the break, just over the top new developments that are so huge, I can't even believe it. The biggest ever. And they're compartmentalized. And then you got folks that are in their bike riding clubs, that's all they care about, or folks that are in their church club, and that's all they care about, or, or liberals that are kind of in their own echo chamber of uh, pseudo-intellectualism and, and, and you know being traffic cops and, and language police. And then I thought about mainline libertarians, patriots, and conservatives. We've got to get outside our echo chamber, which is what I've done for 20-something years, and reach out to everybody and really make a noise however we can to shake people out of their complacency and their trance. We have a mixture of what I term mass Stockholm syndrome or victims defending their victimizers and learned helplessness. But more than learned helplessness and more than mass Stockholm syndrome, it is the normalcy bias. People in North Korea even though a third of their population has been starved to death the last 30 years, even though the government is the most corrupt on earth, totally insane with a little fat clown running it. Despite all that disconnect, the average person in North Korea was born into it, and they don't know the difference. And that's the real danger here is the normalcy bias, and also people think being lazy and not being involved is super cool. Well, here's the good news. Those people that don't care and don't see themselves in the role of resisting tyranny, they don't count either way. They decided to not exist. Those of us that are awake and do care outnumber the parasites and their controllers many times over. We have the ingenuity, we have the skill, we have the will, and we have history and providence on our side, we will win. Now, the huge news that's only being reported in foreign papers, but I've looked at the law, I've looked at the codes, I've looked at the announcements, and I've got the gravest news in our 21 years when we come back. The, 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 the Soros group that has hijacked our government has officially declared war on Russia and served them notice of military attacks being imminent. All right, I shot a detailed report before airtime today so that I could add all the research, all the documents, all the video clips in. We're going to premiere that report. It's 13 minutes long, so it'll take one segment and part of another uh, coming up at the start of the next segment. And the video will be posted it's being uploaded right now by the next hour, by the second hour at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And it deals with the fact that the occupied United States, this country run by Soros, Goldman Sachs, and a few mega banks, openly is already prosecuting asymmetrical warfare in four different countries bordering Russia and in Syria. They are also admittedly putting out white papers that they're trying to overthrow Russia internally. They are also uh, admitting in the latest WikiLeaks documents that they are trying to basically end the free press in this country and that they believe a war with Russia will be the political distraction they need. Now, we've known this for a while, but this has now been confirmed in triplicate. They don't really even try to hide it, quite frankly. And we noticed that a month ago, over a month ago, Hillary came out and said, if there's a cyber attack by Russia, we should militarily strike them. Then we noticed that Northcom and uh, NATO and all of them came out and said, that's our new policy. Which is saying, anybody hacks us, we just think it's you, we're going to militarily hit you, not just cyber attack. Then Joe Biden came out last Wednesday from a clip that aired today on Meet the Press, because they shot it uh, back on Wednesday. They, but they are just a clip promoting the, the show this Sunday, where he said, we're going to launch a massive cyber attack in the next few weeks against Russia. 
And if they respond, we're basically going to militarily hit you. So they're poking the bear right before the election, 22 days out. This is a giant October, November surprise. This is so classic to have a regime that's in trouble start a war. That is the classic 101 move of a tyrant. And it's all over the British, German, Russian, Japanese news, Brazilian. Everybody sees what it is. We're acting worse than Fidel Castro. The people that have hijacked our government have been caught in a criminal conspiracy against this nation. And they came out. The White House spokesman last week, Obama last week, and Hillary spokeswoman on Friday naming me by name and saying that my dangerous ideas have made it into Trump. Now, I'd love to take credit for that. But quite frankly, I'm telling you what's really going on. Trump's being advised by Senator Sessions, and General Flynn, if you want to know who he mainly listens to, and the, both men basically sound just like me. You know why? We're out in an echo chamber, folks. We can all get up and see the sunrise in the morning and agree it's a sunrise. We can all agree that if we drink a glass of lemonade, it's lemonade. And we can all agree when we see tyranny, it's tyranny. So Clinton spokeswoman, Trump campaign overtaken by Breitbart and InfoWars. They act like his greatest strength is his greatest weakness. He comes out and says there's a conspiracy against the American people and the media is part of it. There's a global government being set up. They're taking our liberties. They're trying to start a war. It's the truth. This is such an incredible moment. And they know they're way behind in the polls. That's actually even coming out in mainstream news. They know Hillary and these emails are devastating. There, there's new ones out that I'm going to get to. Because I'm mean, just analyzing five of these emails, took us 30 minutes today, where they know they're violating federal law and the emails they say they are, and they laugh about it and say it doesn't matter, we're in charge. I mean, we've got them saying we are committing crimes, just what Tosh Plumley, the CIA whistleblower, said here four years ago, using the State Department to ship illegal stuff out of the United States. Weapons, you name it. I mean, just right here, folks. We have them. This stack right here gives me, I just got chills. I don't say that on purpose. I mean, I just get chills. I used to get chills maybe once a month when I talked about some story. Little kids burning up at Waco. The Hillary giving the order to go in and kill everybody. That came out in Congress. I got chills then. Now I get them every few minutes because this is just so incredible. How many of these devastating bombshells do we need? Now, they tend to launch big wars when the economy is about to implode. Notice Deutsche Bank, they say, is going down imminently. It could be, Im I mean, it's imminent. It could happen any time. Any moment, worse than Lehman Brothers, 50 times bigger or more. The Shane Clinton's Larry Summers folks created the derivatives, set that whole scam up. The time bomb is ticking down. It's happening now. And we've got Hillary Clinton. Remember this drumbeat that if you're against Hillary, you're for the Russians? It's ridiculous. And then we saw the head general, this is coming up, the, the, the head of the army say, Russia thinks they're going to bring down the EU and have the Brexit and blah, blah, blah. I'll hit you harder than you've ever been hit. The idea that people went out of the EU that they never voted to be part of because Russia's doing it? The idea that people went out of the EU and England because of the Russians? You kept us out of 25 years ago. It has nothing to do with the Russians. The British people want to run their own country. And the same thing here. I want my own country. I don't want to be run by George Soros and Goldman Sachs. And so the answer is, I'm anti-Semitic. Well, I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry George Soros claims he's Jewish. The guy helped round up Jews. He was a freaking Nazi collaborator. It's not my fault he's Jewish. I'm not, I mean, there's a lot of folks in it that aren't Jewish, but the thing is you bring all this race garbage in, kind of like when I was saying famously, hey, folks, um, you know, Obamacare's got death panels and doubles prices. They had MSNBC say Alex Jones is against it because Obama's a black man and he's deeply racist. It has nothing to do with Obama. A bunch of foreign insurance companies basically wrote this thing. Again, we're being looted because our regulators are controlled by foreign interest. Other countries don't let people come in and loot them like this. Only third world countries do. And we act like a third world country that just bends the people over to every foreign interest in a paycheck. And the whole world sees it. And the Russians, after the fall of the Soviet Union for a decade, were treated like a $2 whore as well. And they're finally pulling away. And that's what's happening. And, and if you actually read the Financial Times of London or you read Globalist publications, they admit, they go, world government's in trouble. Our whole program's falling apart. And we, I guess we did rip everybody off. We kind of deserve it. We better reform ourselves. People are really mad. Let's call ourselves liberal New World Order now. These are real headlines. I've got the articles. I'm going to show them to TV viewers and give listeners the headlines. I mean, 
they admit they're setting up world government, they admit it's unelected, they admit it's horrible, and then they say none of us are allowed to leave or the U.S. Army and sitcom's going to kill us. There's about to be a war, bigger than World War II, and if you think you're going to bring down the EU or NATO or get us out of Brexit, we'll hit you harder than you've ever been hit before. Oh, I guess go ahead and hit me then. Hell, nuke Texas then, because the governor here doesn't want to be under the feds and the globalists. I mean, hell, nuke us all. Dig up John Wayne's body. Burn it. He's a Russian agent. George Washington's a Russian agent. He, he, he didn't fight the British redcoats because they were enslaving and had high taxes and were press ganging people into forced naval service. No. George Washington was getting orders from Vladimir Putin, who got the time machine and went back and did it. And the British, again, they are not pulling out of the EU because they don't want the massive taxes and open borders and all the regulations and scams. 90% of their laws being made by the EU. They're doing it because they're, they're Russian agents. But, folks, you say, well, nobody's buying that. They're launching a cyber attack against Russia, claiming they attacked here. And then they say, or we may launch a military attack in doctrine. That's a declaration of war, saying we're going to attack you, clearly trying to trick the Russians into a response. Or they might even do that. They may just false flag and claim the Russians did it. The next 22 days, folks, terror attacks, economic crises. Uh, cyber attacks. Will they knock out East Coast power during the election? Suspend it, claiming the Russians did it? Anything is on the table. But clearly, blame the Russian card in their fist is the main ace card they've got. And we're here to expose it and blow their operation because the globalists are the outlanders. Two days out from the historic election, a referendum against unelected global corporate government. There are more articles today about confirmed leprosy, bubonic plague in the United States. One of the fastest growing businesses in the U.S. is lice and bed bug removal. The infant mortality rate is the worst in the industrialized world. We were the best 50 years ago. I only throw that out there to show you globalism is meant to suck your country dry and kill your prosperity. Now, I'm going to get to this special report, but it, 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 folks need to understand you've got to listen to the second hour today because we're going to get into the rest of the amazing news. Suddenly, I've seen the New York Times, the Washington Post, and others try to regain a little bit of credibility because they know they've destroyed themselves so badly, and Trump at internal polls is still 10, 15 points ahead. They know there's a mega massive landslide coming, so they're hedging their bets. They're admitting that in Haiti, Hillary and Bill, I mean, Chelsea even admitted, robbed and basically killed people with their actions on purpose. It's coming out... Uh, that Hillary has been involved in massive criminal activity. They know there's no way they're going to be able to prop her up, even if she gets into office. They're figuring that out now. The elites are. They don't know what to do. And that's why Axelrod has come out, and I said this last week. Trump annihilated her last week, last Sunday. If he does it again Wednesday from Vegas, and our reporters are going to be there. We're going to be interviewing Nigel Farage, who's advising him and others. Notice how he turned around with Nigel Farage. I mean, that's like the Alex Jones of the U.K., folks, and beyond. He's going to devastate her. And they're thinking about her not showing now. And notice she's not seen, but every four or five days she's got proxies out. She's super sick. I've pointed out, I believe she's getting blood transfusions to be able to even go from looking like she's dead to looking like she's okay. She still had to sit down last week most of the time. Uh, clearly she's being given speed-type drugs, and Trump wants her drug tested. He's saying he'll get drug tested. I mean, Hillary's on Parkinson's medication. So they're in free fall. Now, what do they think is going to save their bacon? I shot this 13-minute report. We're going to air it in this segment and the next. It's going up on InfoWars.com the next hour. You need to get it out to everybody. There's several other reports along the same line, but this is the big kahuna that breaks it down from every angle. The only part I didn't get into in this report is something I followed earlier this morning, and that's their plan B after this one. And that's the billion spent by the Ford Foundation, Soros, and uh, White House-funded groups in the last six, seven years to create racial division and prepare a destabilization technique with communist Islamic sleeper cells they've brought into Europe and the U.S. and the Black Lives Matter crowd to kill police and local government folks in mass, burn down major cities as a pretext to force capitulation to federal slash globalization. And, and that, of course, is in the emails as well. We need to use demographic warfare to control the people. 
So we know they've done this in other areas of the Middle East. They've done it in Eastern Europe, Ukraine. They used anti-police sentiment to launch that civil war that overthrew the elected government. This isn't a defense of the police whole hog. It's a defense of we're not going to have outside groups overthrow the country. I mean, that's what they're doing. So we're on a razor's edge here. And notice, a f just happened today, breaking, Republican Party headquarters is firebombed. That's the Daily Mail. And an adjacent building is dubbed with a Nazi graffiti in North Carolina. See, it's okay, though, because they're Republicans. They're all Nazis, see? They've been dehumanized. But Hillary's false flag is to blame Russia for all the different hacks. Most of it's U.S. government people. We have that from Mr. Benny, former head of the NSA Technical. DNC people that see the corruption, Bernie Sanders people, they get shot in the back. The Russians admitted they hacked six years ago the U.N. emails where they were hiding the decline and in line to get a carbon tax. I mean, we have them. So the other facet of this is the, the, the larger cultural destabilization, and that's in the latest WikiLeaks. Podesta today says, oh, no, it's, it's, it's Arabs that shot up the school. Oh, we, we've got a, oh, no, it's not a white guy. Ugh, too bad. Well, make sure we don't call it terror. So that's the narrative, folks, because they're getting their sleeper cells in place, 80% military-age men, as their backup. That's their shock troops. Then they play the part of the saviors, rounding the folks up they brought in. Keep telling you this, but now we have the emails. This is serious asymmetrical warfare we're facing. His last email, last one came out two days before Scalia was found dead. And they go, yeah, we're about to have some wet work, batting down the hatches and get ready. This is going to be rough. Yeah, a lot of wet work going on out there. That means assassinations. Okay, uh, but let's start the report. Most of it will play in the next segment. It's going up on Infowars.com very, very soon. This deals with the build-up, the preparation, all of it, to have the foreign globalists take over America. And then when the nationalists say no, well, obviously everybody's going to go with the nationalists. So you, you say they're enemy agents while you start a war that gets the public all angry and to psychologically line up behind the central government itself a corporate takeover. Here it is. The information that I'm about to relay to you is the most grave that I've ever reported in my 21 years on air. It is so Armageddon in nature that I find it hard to believe this is actually happening in the year 2016. The United States, hijacked by globalist forces, has openly in the last week declared de facto war against Russia. Why don't we send a message yet to Putin? We're sending a message. The United States military will stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Russia's hacked into a lot of things. China's hacked into a lot of things. Russia even hacked into the Democratic National Committee. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. The message he'll you sent, it. he'll know it. It will be at the time of our choosing and under the circumstances that have the greatest impact. Right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. I think it would be great if we got along with Russia because we could fight ISIS together as an example. We could slide into nuclear war very quickly from her declared policy in Syria. So I won't sleep well at night if Donald Trump is elected, but I sure won't sleep well at night if Hillary Clinton is elected. Future high-end war between nation states and great powers, very highly lethal, unlike anything our army has experienced, at least since World War II. So a message is going to be sent. Will the public know it? I hope not. We're going to get to the de facto declaration of war and the preparations for physical war. And what the head of the army says will have as high a casualty level as World War II in a moment. But first, the background that's undisputed. Russia only has two military bases outside of its country. It's not expansionist. It's fighting radical Islam around the world and should be an ally of the United States. And many of our top generals and admirals and others have been on record saying that fact. 
The threat is radical Islam and China, not Russia. I think it would be great if we get along with Russia because we could fight ISIS together as an example. The reason the globalists are so upset at Trump is they know he's being advised by the former head of defense intelligence, General Flynn, who exposed the fact that Obama and Hillary were expanding ISIS and al-Qaeda worldwide three years ago. You are basically saying that even in government at the time, you knew those groups were around, you saw this analysis, sure. and you were arguing against it, but who wasn't listening? I think, the, I think the administration. So the administration turned a blind eye to your analysis? I don't know the if they turned a blind eye. I think it was a decision. I think it was a willful decision. A willful decision to go support an insurgency that had Salafists, Al-Qaeda, well, and Muslim A willful Brotherhood. decision to do what they're doing. The multinational corporations that brag at the Davos Forum that they've hijacked Europe and the United States and many other Western countries are a multinational outside force basically taking over our nations and colonizing us with their world government system. So they need to have an outside threat to fool nationalists to give up their sovereignty to globalism in the name of protecting nationalism. That's why when the UK pulls out of the unelected dictatorial EU, mainstream media claims the Russians are behind it. That's why when Donald Trump and myself and others call for restoring our borders and doing better trade deals and not ceding our authority to the TPP. They claim we're Russian agents because Russia itself is pulling out of the New World Order. The UK is doing it and so are we. So if you're a foreign group taking a country over, what do you do? You start pointing fingers at the patriots internally who are trying to save the country and claim they're foreign Ruski agents. By midsummer, we had seen WikiLeaks, DC Leaks, and other organizations dump hundreds of thousands of pages of hacked emails on the web showing the organized crime operation going on between the Democrats, the mainstream media, and the foreign banks that literally own and control them. So to divert the public from the crimes they'd committed, they doubled down and said, see, the Russians are involved in taking over our elections and manipulating things, but they showed no evidence. By late August, Hillary Clinton was 10 to 15 points in national polls behind Donald Trump. They were panicking. I began to see rumblings from the UN and the EU that they were going to send 10 times the number of observers they normally would to oversee our elections. That's why I went on air and said, we need to look at the attempt by Hillary to steal this election. She stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders, the sky's the limit. Obama came out two weeks later and basically said I was crazy, election fraud didn't exist. Then, two weeks after that, they announced that they were gonna federalize the elections to keep them safe from right-wingers and the Russians. Then, on September 1st, Democratic Party nominee goes on national television and says, that if we think Russia has launched any type of cyber attack on the U.S., that we'll launch a cyber attack on them and maybe even use physical military force. You've seen reports. Russia's hacked into a lot of things. China's hacked into a lot of things. Russia even hacked into the Democratic National Committee. Maybe even some state election systems. So we've got to step up our game. Make sure we are well defended and able to take the fight to those who go after us. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. On cue for the next month, the leading story every night is that Russia is taking over the elections, that Russia has spies everywhere, and that Donald Trump works for them. Then, on October 7th, the Director of National Intelligence, getting his information from the CIA, comes out and says, we know it's the Russians, they have cyber attacked us officially, but gave no evidence. Then a week later, Vice President Joe Biden, in mafioso style, goes on Meet the Press and tells Russia, we're gonna send you a message with a massive cyber attack, we've got incredible capabilities, we're going to show you. Why haven't we sent a message yet to Putin? We're sending a message. We have the capacity to do it, and uh, the message he'll know said it. that he'll know it, and it'll be at the time of our choosing, and under the circumstances that have the greatest impact. Uh, the capacity to do to fundamentally alter the election is, is is not what people think, and uh, I tell you what, to the extent that they do, we will be proportional in what we do, and. Uh, at, at, uh, so a message is going to be sent. Will the public know it? 
hope not. And this is where the critical bureaucratic declaration of war outside of Congress's authority comes in. Because we have the director of national intelligence, we have the intelligence agency heads, we have Mrs. Clinton, we have Joe Biden, we have Obama meeting with top generals just two days ago talking about war with Russia in preparation and saying their new doctrine is if you cyber attack us, we will cyber attack you and or both hit you with a military response in Hillary Clinton's own words. And guess what? That's the new NATO doctrine they announced a month ago, that they may hit Russia first, or if any cyber attacks, any hacking of any type, come from the massive country of Russia, that they will take that as an act of war. From any angle you look at, we are now officially at war with Russia, and this is surpassing anything that ever happened in the Cold War, according to even mainline analysts. And we have proxy wars on the border of Russia in Ukraine and in Russia's backyard in Syria. And we have top generals in Congress, like the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Dumford, saying, look, you're asking me to put up a no-fly zone and shoot down Russian aircraft. They're going to attack us back. That is an act of war. Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. In summation, why is all of this happening? Well, about a week ago, General Milley, the head of the Army, explained why. If you try to have the Brexit, or if Russia tries to pull out of the New World Order, or if patriots worldwide support the collapse of the EU because it's unelected, our military, working for the globalist, will hit you harder than you've ever been hit before. That's the message. And Russia is being scapegoated for the unraveling of the New World Order and world government. The United States military, despite all our challenges, despite our op-tempo, despite everything we've been doing, will stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. Other countries, Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea went to school on us. They closely watched how we fought in 91 and 03. They studied our doctrine, our tactics, our equipment, our organization, our training, and our leadership. And in turn, they revised their own doctrines, and they are rapidly modernizing the military today to avoid our strengths in hopes of defeating us at some point in the future. First, not surprisingly, is that will be highly lethal, very highly lethal, unlike anything our Army has experienced, at least since World War II. The world is in global turmoil. Major banks are going under on a routine basis. The biggest bank in Germany, Deutsche Bank, is teetering on the edge of collapse and will make Lehman Brothers look tame in comparison. And historically, when major collapses begin to happen, Countries and empires tend to start wars as a political distraction so they can blame the international financial crises on the war itself and not on their own failed policies. And of course, they want to influence the election here. Every globalist publication from the Washington Post to the Financial Times of London to The Economist admits that with Brexit pulling out of the euro and with Russia pulling out of globalism, what's happening here with nationalism and Trump, they're on their last legs and they've got to prop Hillary up. She is their Stalingrad. She is their Waterloo. If she falls there, they believe in their own words, their whole system will completely unravel. Well, I got news for them. It's already unraveling. But they believe that if they can trick Russia into a physical war or cyber attack Russia and get Russia to respond back, they can then pull false flags during the election and use that as an excuse to blame Russia for any election problems. Then Homeland Security has to come in to federalize it further to protect the vote. The good news is, across the political spectrum, the intelligentsia is really waking up to the fact that we have a very dangerous criminal group in control of our country that wants to stay in control and who might even start a nuclear war to do so. And that's why the head of the Green Party and others have come out and said that Hillary Clinton is much more dangerous than Donald Trump because she says that she wants a war with Russia, she wants a war with Iran and others. Under Hillary Clinton, we could slide into nuclear war very quickly from her declared policy in Syria. So I won't sleep well at night if Donald Trump is elected, but I sure won't sleep well at night if Hillary Clinton is elected. The ball is now in your court. 
history is repeating itself in a very, very dangerous fashion. The criminal elements that have hijacked our country are trying to start physical wars with Russia and others. They're opening our borders up, bringing in jihadis here to destabilize things as well. They're taking over our election processes to, quote, protect it from the Russians, even as they announce they're going to launch a massive cyber attack against Russia in retaliation for something they can't even prove Russia did. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a critical time, probably one of the most critical times in all of human history and development. It's now time to hit a knee and start asking God to basically open more people's eyes up and that we would have peace on this planet and not thermal nuclear war. The people are ready to be awakened. Please take this special report, email it to members of Congress, to local talk show hosts, and to mainstream media and say it's time to wake up and turn this country and the world around from the brink of Armageddon. And who's on the march? Folks that want a new enlightenment, people that want a renaissance, folks that want to have a system based on free will and free association, every race, color, and creed, who want true global peace, but through diversity, through sovereignty, through the basic ideas of everybody from George Washington to Martin Luther King Jr. And what you see being pushed by the Democrats is pure evil. And of course, the, the Republican establishment is almost as bad. Um, I say almost because they've never been for 30, 40 years really even real Republicans. They're just the second string of the Democrats. And now that entire power structure is against Donald J. Trump. I'm live on this Sunday edition. I have never, since I was probably 25, I, I was working 18 hours a day, six days a week when I was 25, trying to launch this whole operation. I've been on air about three, four years, but I wanted to go next level. So for, for a few years, I uh, worked like this. But I am back to my old ways. I, I am up here seven days a week. I am shooting out of bed at 6 a.m. Because my kids get up real early, hanging out with them a few hours, and then I... I I can't wait till this is all over. Hopefully things get more stable, and then I can just get back to spending time with my family, taking them out you know, on the lake, fishing, hiking. I mean, I don't want to just be here doing this 18 hours a day. Uh, but I have been working since 9 a.m. this morning, and I'm, and I'm not complaining. I mean, I should be working more. The problem is I just get exhausted. Um, before I went on air today, I was just totally exhausted, and I just started looking at the news issues again, and all of a sudden I was awake again. So I'd been up here working all day, and then as soon as I went back to look at the news, I was exhausted, right before, and I was just, like, energized because I had all these stacks of news ready I was going to cover because this is so incredible. I mean, my frustration is Tom Danhauser, super great guy, producer for Coast to Coast AM, he sent me a text of a news article, and he says, is this real? Is this, is this really happening? This is, like, 20 minutes ago, and I looked at it. I, I, don't, I don't know who... Um, you know, this particular news site is, there's so many, but I know this came out in WikiLeaks uh, earlier in the week, but they did have a better headline than we did when we put it out. It was, um, this is uh, usasupreme.com. There's all these great independent journals now. You just go through the WikiLeaks, you put them out. We wrote about this earlier in the week when, you know, this is like three leaks ago. And, you know, we're just like, yes, this confirms that Hillary and, the globalists uh, were running, you know, Al Qaeda, and it's a proxy war. And we had General Flynn tell us this years ago. We told everybody before Flynn did. I mean, I'm not bragging. It's just we had all the sources from Colonel Schaefer to other unnamed sources. I'll just leave it at that. Tosh Plumley, you name it. But this is a fact. This went on, and so it's like, oh my gosh, it's over. Hillary's ISIS email just leaked, and it's worse than anyone could have imagined. See, I could never come up with a headline that good. I just dig out the data and know how the system works. I would just say confirmed Hillary running ISIS in emails. But I should have said things like, it's over. Hillary's chief of staff calls Americans dumb, says let's keep them in the dark, and let's create race war. You know, it's stuff like that people will actually care about and go read. I said we're just so dry about it. And I tell my writers, listen, we got to be more sensational. Because when they say they're ready for nuclear war with Russia, they're going to physically attack them and launch a cyber attack, and then Russia's going to respond, and it's going to mess up the election. That is sensational. There aren't words to come up with. And so they accuse me of being dangerous. They had uh, Hillary's chief of staff come out and say that, and, you know, all of them in the last few days. You people are dangerous. Listen, if you were just boss hogging it and, giving your family jobs and stuff and doing the regular things, I would oppose it and I'd just criticize you, but I wouldn't be 
absolutely foaming at the mouth with my eyes bugging out coming up against you. Is that Hillary's website? Hillary's Facebook has a video saying this is Alex Jones. I'm like the main thing they're attacking now. Again, because they know if you go with it, it beats them. So they have to pick me as the straw man, demonize who I am, act like I'm discredited in a con game. Oh, look, this is kooky. Ha, ha, ha. I work for the Chinese government when the emails say so. Ha, ha, ha. I run ISIS. Ha, ha, ha. See how they do it? Uh, that, but that video that we just premiered last hour at the end of the hour that's so powerful is on Infowars.com. It's red-linked with a bunch of other special reports I shot this weekend. It's up to you to get these out. Emergency. War declared on Russia by Soros-controlled U.S. It is very, 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 very sad. We'll be back. All right, I'm going to do some mid-air refueling as we kick off the second hour here. We're live. I'll be back tomorrow, Lord willing, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central with the big weekday transmission. We have it Wars Nightly News weeknights, 7 o'clock Central. Find all the details, free podcast, free apps, and everything at Infowars.com forward slash show or Infowars.com forward slash app or app. We printed a million of these a few months ago. And we've been putting them free in all the orders. But then uh, I made the point that we should just sell these at cost. And so we've got 400,000 left of the stickers. You can get 100 of them for $17. They're big, high quality, you know, petroleum based. So they're real thick and rubbery. Last decade or so. Uh, Hillary for Prison 2016, Infowars.com. And I want you to post these in legal and lawful areas. And we got foreign banks openly overthrowing the country. Don't, don't actually do anything to defeat the New World Order. But seriously, uh, these need to be gotten out there right now, especially in battleground states. We also have the Hillary for Prison shirt that we've put out for a year and a half. We coined the term, uh, and a lot of folks have knocked that off. That's fine. We're not going to sell the Hillary for Prison shirts anymore. It's limited edition. When this run is out, they're gone. And right now, they are nine ninety-five. That includes shipping, by the way. Shirt costs us like five bucks. The shipping's about five bucks. In fact, folk, folks that get 4Xs and stuff, that we actually lose money on it because the shirt costs us a dollar more. But uh, high-quality shirts is Infowars.com on the right shoulder. Legalized Freedom, Infowars.com on the back. When they're gone, they're gone. Then we also have a new designer shirt, Made in America, really soft fabric. Uh, it's $22 because getting a shirt made in America is like 10 bucks, uh, And it is Hillary being uh, basically uh, defeated by the Gadsden snake wrapped around her. It says, don't tread on me. And on the back, uh, it says... Lock her up 2016. That's a limited edition. We're not reprinting that as well. Infowarsstore.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. 888-253-3139. We're also running 25% off on our sleep aid that just takes every known organic high quality uh, herb that helps you sleep better safely and puts it in there. Normally, melatonin of this dose, the same amount of pills, would be $19. That's the standard price. This is $19 before the sales, $14 right now, $14.96. Knockout was something I designed, by the way. I mean, I went to the top companies and did it, but I said, look, I'm, I don't want to, because, you know, I don't want to sit here and just take melatonin or just take tell L-tryptophan or just take valerian root. Different stuff works better for people. I want it all together safely. And they said, well, here it is. Chamomile, lemon balm, and a whole bunch of other ingredients, all at good dosages, in there. And let me tell you, when you're all jacked up, when you're upset, when things are going on, restful sleep is so key. It's the number one thing for health. And, and knockout, quite frankly, is something that I've been taking almost every day the last few months because if I don't do it, I have trouble sleeping because of the energy level that's in the economy and the world. Uh, so it's amazing. It's got uh, just so many great things in it. Check it out for yourself. At 1495, it is a, an absolute loss leader. Infowarslife.com is our nutraceutical subpage of Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife, one word, dot com. Or call 888 253 3139. Seven days a week, uh, you know, 24 hours a day, we take your calls and take your orders. 888 253 3139. We have the Vitamin Mineral Fusion uh, Fruit Punch. Uh, it's great to get the kids to make sure they actually absorb organic multivitamin and trace minerals and things. We have the X2 Survival Shield, Super Mel Vitality, our Biome Defense Probiotic. Uh, it's the very best out there at a price no one else can match. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. And most talk show hosts plug every segment. I just plug enough to fund our operation, but also do it by incredibly high-quality products so that once you use them, you know how good they are. I don't have to sit there and keep re-plugging all day. I mean... 
Your gut is one of the number one attack areas. The pesticides, the rest of it. You need good probiotics. This is the best we could come up with in seven years. Total game changer. That's what we do. So InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free. 888-253-3139. And that knockout special is ending very, very soon. Okay. That said, uh, I hope there's not going to be war with Russia, but there's already a proxy war in Syria and in North Africa, in Libya, and in many other areas like Ukraine. But regardless, they are scapegoating Russia for this election and preparing to manipulate the election and are cyber attacking Russia. And I think it's going to be a false flag where Russia doesn't strike back because Russia has really been very, very smart about this. Uh, and then they basically say Russia disrupts things. Just look for that. Now, by us exposing it, they may be forced to back off. This analysis all clicked for me the last few days, and I did yesterday call some of my really smart sources, and they said, of course that's what's going on. Yes, 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 we know that. I mean, it's not that Trump follows what I say. Trump gets it. I'm going to play some clips of Trump in a moment, but I want to point out Jill Stein, the Green Party leader, who's a real liberal. Remember those folks? You disagree with them on some things, but on most stuff you agreed with them, like the Iraq war being a bad idea and stuff, and, you know, Trump said that too, didn't get credit, even though we have six clips of him saying it before it happened. Well, three before and three right after it started. They just lie and have Lester Holt go, no, you didn't. You were never against the Iraq war. That's not true. See, that's how dumb they think you are, and that's in the emails. They think you're dumb. Trump doesn't think you're dumb. She said, don't waste your vote on corporate Democrats who betray you. The Democrats are getting two to one corporate contributions, according to the Federal Elections Commission, just Google that, than any Republican candidate on average. Just, just double. The big money wants Democrats. Divide and conquer, race war, dumb down idiots. That's what they want. Big third world slum. Now, that's how the Roman Empire controlled people. The Republican Party's horrible, but they've proven themselves failures by letting Trump take over. So they're really in the doghouse. Trump has basically gotten zero corporate money. He out collects 20 to 1 small donations or more that Hillary gets. That's in the news today. What an endorsement of Trump. And Jill Stein, to her credit, after watching Bernie Sanders be robbed, I mean, I don't agree with a lot of stuff he says, but you know, a lot of the problems he talks about are real. The solutions are bad. I mean, she stole the nomination. Stanford University certified that. They admit it. It's winning by landslides. California, you name it. She came out and said, don't waste it. Absolutely. How could Democrats... Go along with somebody that persecutes the press, launches all these wars, funds Al-Qaeda, is a horrible person. And then tells big corporations behind closed doors, of course I'm for TPP. I helped write that. That's in the new emails. But the last data dump was big. The new one is, of course I'm going to ram through TPP and transfer U.S. sovereignty to multinationals. I helped write it. As they question her, they go, you're saying you're against it. She's like, what the hell is your problem? So here is Jill Stein, very powerful clip. Extremism grows out of the policies of the Clintons, in particular NAFTA, which sent our jobs overseas, and Wall Street deregulation, which blew nine million jobs uh, up into smoke. So that's what's creating this right-wing extremism. A vote for Hillary Clinton isn't going to fix it. And one last point, which is this, that it's now Hillary Clinton who wants to start an air war uh, with Russia over Syria by calling for a no-fly zone. We have 2,000 nuclear missiles on hair trigger alert and Mikhail Gorbachev, the uh, former premier of the Soviet Union, is saying we are closer to a nuclear war than we have ever been. Under Hillary Clinton, we could slide into nuclear war very quickly yeah. from her declared policy in Syria. So I won't sleep well at night if Donald Trump is elected, but I sure won't sleep well at night if Hillary Clinton is elected. Fortunately, we have another choice other than these two candidates who are both promoting lethal policies. But on the issue of war and nuclear weapons and the potential for nuclear war, it's actually Hillary's policies, which are much scarier than Donald Trump, who does not want to go to war with Russia. He wants to seek modes of... That's right. When Russia's doing nothing, China and others are the big issue. And I, can't, I find no fault with what she said. Trump's wrong on torture. At least he's honest about it. He goes, we're already doing it. We're going to torture ISIS. He just doesn't get that once you do it on one bad group, then it's everybody. You just can't do it. But at least he's honest. He's wrong about because he's not a tech guy. Hey, the iPhone, they got a warrant. They killed people in San Bernardino. Let them into the damn phone. Find out where the other terrorists are. I agree. Crack that phone. They weren't asking for that phone. They were asking for the master key, which they already have. They just want it capitulated so they don't get in trouble in court. 
And then Obama blocked the FBI from stopping him two years before anyways. So Trump is wrong on a few issues, but he means well. With Hillary, it's a whole nother universe, a whole nother level of, uh, okay? Trump is getting a crash course in brain surgery. He isn't run by the elite. They hate him. Hillary is the consummate elitist. She brags that it's the gold standard TPP that she helped write it because she did. Like Clinton says, her husband, she works like a demon against us. For close to three decades, Kathy O'Brien has said that Hillary Clinton raped her in a satanic ritual. Now, when I first met Kathy O'Brien 20 years ago, I hadn't yet snuck into Bohemian Grove. I hadn't covered uh, Skull and Bones. I, I really wasn't aware of the fact that secret societies were still operating. But what happens is, just like, let's say, in the Mexican Mafia or the white supremacists, gangs that are out there, you have to go out and say, kill an old lady at a liquor store or go knock somebody over the head who's innocent to become a made member of the group. You've got to commit crimes where you can be compromised. And they declassified in the 70s that a Dr. Ewing Cameron had more than 20,000 children in Canada and the U.S. kidnapped for the exact same type of sex abuse that Kathy O'Brien talks about. Now, I've had dinner with her and her husband. I have met them on several occasions, and I, I believe I only had them on the show one time. And that's because, because they can't totally prove it. I didn't want to go there, and I faced a lot of criticism over the years for not going there. But now they've got all these women that coming out against Trump with, oh, he held my hand on a, this or did this on an airplane. Witnesses are all coming out saying it's not true. They've got Carlos Slim, the Mexican kingpin, and this foreign chic financing all this. So you guys are going to play like that? I mean, we know who Hillary's girlfriends are. It's only a matter of time somebody breaks in their house and gets the porno movies. I mean, you people think we, we can just hack stuff? You think you're going to play with the American people too much longer here? I'm not saying I'm going to do that. But the operators are. We're not going to let you destroy this country, lady. I saw her today in some brief event she attended. She, she looked like she was dying. And she's emblematic of this whole corrupt system. And she's got me front and center on her website because they're more afraid of what we cover than anything else because we understand their game plan. There is a criminal global conspiracy against this country. We have it. Barry Goldwater exposed it 50 years ago because he was in the Senate committee meetings when they admitted it with the Carnegie Endowment. So we'll get Kathy O'Brien on this week. Mark Phillips will we'll do that. And we'll go back into Bohemian Grove and Skull and Bones and everything else for you. Because I've met with her repeatedly, and I think she's credible. And the whole story is exactly how they'd operate. But regardless, you're fair game now, Hillary. You want to go there? We'll go there. Hillary Clinton child rape bombshell. We're going to play that video coming up in the last segment tonight. Gloves are off, lady. Gloves are off. You want to start World War III? Gloves are off. i got to preserve my children's future. And that means all children's future. See, I don't have an Achilles heel where you could just threaten my children because I care about everybody's children. Now, I also quite literally don't have my right Achilles heel. It's now 80% blown. I'm going to have to have surgery soon. Uh, but uh, that which doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. Everybody's freaking out, though, because they're finally getting into the last week's emails and these new ones were... They're admitting that ISIS and Al-Qaeda are being run by the West and, and funded by Saudi Arabia, and it's a proxy army, and they know all the rebels are ISIS and Al-Qaeda. I, I mean, folks, back before this was a campaign issue, when we made it an issue, so they hate us because we break the barbed wire first. We, we hit first, so all the other cowards can come after us. I'm not bragging. It's just a fact. That's our tactic. It's not about me winning, me surviving, any of this. It's about defeating you. But, I, I mean, they had Council on Foreign Relations three years ago with the headline, Why We Need Al-Qaeda in Syria. Then the public freaked out, so they flipped the name to ISIS. But everybody's freaking out now. It's over. Hillary's ISIS email just leaked, and it's worse than anyone could have imagined, where she admits it all and admits they're backing it. Of course they were. I mean, I had Colonel Schaefer on one week after Benghazi, and he laid out the whole plan, and then he got called in and chewed out. 
And the next time I got him on was six months later. We got to get Schaefer on. Kissed his ass, whatever. He got. He's a great guy. He gets reamed when he comes on. But the, he's such a patriot. And I, went, I had him on. And I go, yeah, I just heard Congress is admitting they're having closed hearings on the fact that most of the rebels are, are Al-Qaeda. And he goes, on air, he goes, well, yes, I was just there briefing him three hours ago. I mean, that was him giving the secret briefing. This, he was the former head of the Al-Qaeda desk for the Army. We got sources even more high level than Schaefer. But it's just, everybody's like, Alex, did you hear Hillary runs Al-Qaeda? She runs, really? Did you hear Donald Trump six months ago say she founded it? I mean, all I'm telling you is we don't want the credit. But do you understand, we don't just come up with like rhetoric like, it'll sound bad to say she founded ISIS. No, she did. So we say it. It's all I've got that I'm real. People need to understand, in a world of liars, this one ain't it, okay? I had a reporter in here, love him to death, earlier this week, and I retracted that because we read the email wrong. You could see how we read it wrong. Paul put the article out saying that, uh, you know, Hillary hates to say, you know, real Americans. And that's how it reads. But they spun it back and said, no, we mean she hates to use that cliche term. And I said, fair enough. Maybe we're wrong in our interpretation. The reporter said, I don't care. They're lying about us. I'm going to use it. And I said, no, you're not. We don't do that. And that's the real danger here is, folks, you cannot look into the abyss and become it. You've got to understand, you dance with the devil. He don't change, you change. And I'm not sitting up here on some high horse about credibility. The real power is in telling the truth. Now, I want to go to a few clips as we go to break. Longer segment coming up. Because here's Donald Trump, and this is why they're so scared. This is why they're so upset. I just had my video list here. Oh, here it is. Talking about the New World Order, talking about global conspiracy, talking about how the press is in it against us. It's in the new emails that came out this week and more today. Her meeting with global corporations selling out our sovereignty. That's what this is. So let's go ahead and play Donald Trump. Here it is. The Clinton machine is at the center of this power structure. We've seen this firsthand in the WikiLeaks documents in which Hillary Clinton meets in secret with international banks to plot the destruction of U.S. sovereignty in order to enrich these global financial powers, her special interest friends, and her donors. It's directly out of General Flynn. I think you really hate us. So true. Russia to the oligarchs off, we are too. We're getting the flea bath, folks. Get ready. I mean, we're going to be perfect after. That guy is such a patriot. One more clip I want to play. Or is that it? Honestly, she should be locked up. Should be. Should be locked up. And likewise, the emails show that the Clinton machine is so closely and irrevocably tied to the media organizations that she... They have their own people in there. That she, listen to this, is given the questions and answers in advance of her debate performance with Bernie Sanders. And it's still ongoing. It's all rigged. The media is in a conspiracy against the American people. Hillary Clinton is also given approval and veto power over stories over quotes written about her. All right, we're going to come back. This has all been known forever, but now it's totally confirmed. I mean... When you turn on the news and every channel is word for word the same thing in the same order, you don't need to have a WikiLeak to know that. We'll be right back. Stay with us. So the mainstream corporate media ran, when I say thousands, I mean thousands because I test it. I take the search terms. I want to know if it's a White House talking point or Hillary talking point. And I put it in. And then if I see three, 4,000 articles on Google News, I know it was a talking point. They only do that when it's a talking point. Alex Jones, Matt Drudge, insane. There's no domestic drone program in the U.S. There never will be. Thousands of newspapers, like three, four years ago. I searched it, saw thousands, TV stations, you name it. Went on for weeks. And then I had all the local news as they were launching drones, surveilling farmers and ranchers, you name it. See, it's a formula. When they launch something, they then come out and say people talking about it are liars. Show that locals hear that, they see it. And then they go, oh, I'm supposed to shut up about this. I better go along with the establishment. What do you have to gain doing that? Now they have drones at football games watching everybody. Now they admit they're watching all the farmers. Everything but the border. 
And, and I just use that as a case point because I saw this uh, article Friday. My phone starts ringing at night and they go, the White House spokesman just attacked you and so did the Hillary spokesperson. And they're, they're saying you're dangerous. So I go look at it up and it's just thousands of articles. You know, just, oh my gosh, Trump and Alex Jones and Steve Bannon are anti-Semitic and they're claiming there's foreign mega banks in control because that's in all the emails. Who said anything about Jews? I mean, Israel's super diverse, like seven, eight different political parties, liberals, conservatives, just like us. I mean, yeah, there's some Jews in international banking. The Rothschilds are famous for it. It's like mafia. But I mean, because the Italians have some mafia or all Italians bad. I mean, you know, because there's some redneck, you know, East Texas people that might be racist. Does that mean I'm, my dad's from East Texas? He's bad. No, I mean, you're the ones bringing all this stuff in. But there's the Washington Post. Donald Trump says there's a global conspiracy against him. Uh, no. We just played part of the speech. I watched the whole speech in Florida. He said, there's a conspiracy against you by the press. It's corporate. It's multinational. Well, of course it is. It's in the WikiLeaks. But you don't need to have WikiLeaks to know that. I mean, the one-sidedness, the spinning the pulse. Let me give you a news flash. I've been involved in the news and researching things for 25 years, 21 years on air. And change. And I've never seen polling companies like Reuters and all the big ones, Bloomberg, do stuff like they'll have a list of phones they're calling and things where they know they're actually more Democrats to spend stuff. And you, and you can actually kind of pay for the polls you want. I mean, it's famous. I, I, I've commissioned polls. They wouldn't even let me do reasonable polls. A lot of these companies, they just wanted to manipulate it the way they wanted to, an agenda where I was paying them 10 grand or 20 grand or whatever it was the case was, and then they would get what they wanted. You look those polls up on 9-11, stuff like that, who folks thought was behind it. But when they put in the sampling, and I know I got all these hundreds of articles, I mean, why am I going back to this? Because, folks, when Reuters and Bloomberg and Politico sample between seven and 53%, that's the highest number I've seen, more Democrats than Republicans in an online poll, in a phone poll, or in a focus group poll. Do I have to explain to people how that's rigged? If you've got 7% more Democrats you're sampling, you're going to get higher percentages of Democrats saying they're voting for Hillary. Duh. You go up to 50-something percent. I mean, what? Well, <laughs> And the average one's like 15 points they're adding. It'd be like if you went to the old-fashioned grocery store, those of you who are young enough to remember, sometimes they weigh the vegetables or the, or the meat right there at the counter in some small town. And a lot of you probably aren't old enough to remember that. I was a little bitty when the last time I saw that little bitty place. My grandma would stop sometimes. She wouldn't go all the way into town. A little grocer had some meat and stuff behind the counter. And they'd, you, you'd get what you wanted, butcher give it to you, and then they'd take it to the front, and they'd weigh it right there and just look at a sheet and charge you that. Imagine if you walked up to weigh, say, two pounds of hamburger meat, and they put their thumb all the way on it and put an extra two pounds on it. You'd say, hey, I'm not paying for four pounds. That's two pounds. It's the same thing. And they do it over and over and over again in front of everybody. And I'm just like, is this a joke? I mean, is the public really this dumb that they can't click on the methodology of a poll and find out that Hillary's really 30, 40 points behind, according to this? Then I ask, is it possible she's that far behind? Because if they're sampling that many more, it would, she has 200 people at her average crowd. Trump has 40,000. The Google Analytics show he's got 25 times, no, excuse me, 2,500 times more people searching his stuff than hers. I mean, it's a joke, people. I don't know the full numbers. I know Trump internal polls and other polls that are internal with these companies because uh, other groups actually want real polls as well, not just the fake ones. They want to really know what's happening to have a psych picture that Trump is 10 to 15 points ahead. He's always been, and it looks like it's worse. It looks like the sex stuff backfired. And the numbers I'm getting are they're completely panicking right now. And I've got Axelrod saying she shouldn't attend the debate uh, Wednesday. I've got the Washington Post that is the CIA. I mean, it is the worst element of the CIA. It is the mouth of the New World Order saying Hillary really did rob people in Haiti. I, or, or maybe everybody in the media is finally going, my God, who are we really putting all in for? This woman is a complete demon. So that's where we stand.
right now, but I'm telling you, I'm seeing a major, and I don't do like they do, announce everyone's fleeing Hillary like they do. Everyone's fleeing Trump to create a mass hysteria and, and, and then create like the secret, I say it so it becomes, no, no, no. I wouldn't tell you this. If Hillary was ahead, I would tell you. She's way behind. And they're panicking. And the whole world hates her. Every real liberal from Assange uh, to the head of the Green Party, Jill Stein, to you name it, is like Hillary Clinton is a demon. Bill says she works like a demon. Assange says she's a demon. I tell you, she's a demon. I talked to uh, one of Bill Clinton's famous girlfriends. She's a constant, uh, lawyer. She was in here. Uh, Dolly Kyle last week. And uh, she hadn't heard me say how bad reported the the Secret Service and military, how bad Hillary stinks. I mean, that just comes up. They go, and my God, I've never smelled somebody stinks as bad as her. And then she, Dolly Kyle brings up how she was the stinkiest woman she's ever been around. It smells like dead fish. I mean, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm just reporting this stuff, people. Alex Jones vindicated. Bill's former lover confirms Hillary smells awful. I mean, I, I don't. They made a big national story out of that. The president attacked me over it. By the way, Bill reportedly doesn't smell bad. Obama smells like, you know what, I said like sulfur. That's not what I was told, like, like, like a latrine. I was told he smells like you know what. And I tried to use a nice term for it. So let me just correct, give you the full truth, nothing about the truth, so help me God. He smells like a pile of you know what. And if they want to run with that and they think that'll, oh, their constituents, oh, look at the enemy. That's all they've got. All I've got, you people want, say we, we, we like our doctor, we can keep it, and then laugh at us and say, thank God we're stupid. I got plenty of meat and potatoes to attack you on all day long. You people are criminals. But they've got a con game up there that they're so confident. They're so confident, uh-huh. No, they're attacking what scares them the most. And every time Trump goes hard, he went soft first debate, lost like five points in real polls, maybe more. He went hard, boosted, blasted to all-time high. They're panicking. Don't go to another debate, Hillary. Because it's the truth. It's not attacking when it's true. It's not attacking when she's a bully that turned Al-Qaeda loose all over the world to kill Christians. It's the truth. And, and I noticed the trolls on InfoWars. The Soros people, they admit she's spending hundreds of millions to go out and troll and all this. But the other folks aren't trolls. They're just people that, and it's a small minority of folks, but they want to believe, and I want to reach out to them because I care about you, that you're a winner because you never choose a side. I didn't choose a side with McCain and Obama because it was pretty obvious. I held my nose with Romney, but knew he was just basically taking a fall. I didn't put any energy into that. With Trump, the entire enemy is against him. I know his advisors are patriots. I know he listens to people. He understands what's going on. And of course I've become Trump vision. This is an, I was all for the Brexit. I'm all for Russia getting out from under the new world order. This is a critical battle for sovereignty and humanity worldwide. This is history happening. I want to come back and play another Trump clip and the new Genrich clip about this, who, by the way, I don't like Genrich, but he's saying true stuff, so I'll play it, but I'll give it the proviso. I mean, he was a Rockefeller minion all the way. It's one of the troubling signs on Trump is he has that guy attached to him, but just being honest, the point is, is that they're scared of him because they've got a dossier, a dossier, and they know he's for real, and he can do just a few things. Our economy will explode. The debt will go down if they just keep spending the same. The problem was under Reagan, they massively increased debt with the Democrats and brought more funds in. Kennedy cut taxes by 50%, receipts doubled. All right. I'm going to play a few of these clips, play a couple minutes from the Kathy O'Brien uh, interview that she did 15 plus years ago. She's been on this broadcast a long time ago. You know, she says that Hillary Clinton raped and abused her. And I know that Hillary uh, has a very sordid, twisted past. A lot of credible people have asked me to have her on, so I'm looking to do that, but that's coming up here in a few minutes. You know, they're having people with no proof, absolutely no proof, you know, come up and make up all these wild things about Trump. So I never really went there with O'Brien, but you want us to, you want to play by those rules, we will. But speaking of Trump talking about this conspiracy, the media says it's one against him. No, no, no. He's saying it's against the American people. It is. It's criminal interest took over the country. I've been selling off the greatest country the world ever saw. And then telling us that it's the best time we've ever seen. Obama says our economy's the best it's ever been. Well, I guess it's for him. Living like a king while he tells other people they can't have air conditioning and cars. Uh, here's uh, Trump again Friday. Powerful weapon deployed by the Clintons is the corporate media, the press. 
Let's be clear on one thing. The corporate media in our country is no longer involved in journalism. They're a political, special interest, no different than any lobbyist or other financial entity with a total political agenda, and the agenda is not for you, it's for themselves. Notice. And their agenda is to elect crooked Hillary Clinton at any cost, at any price, no matter how many lives they destroy. And CNN for has them, now come out, has put out an war. order. And for them... ...to not play any of the Trump speeches. Uh, the order is don't let producers get clips they want, but don't show any of what Trump's saying. Meanwhile, you have to go to foreign press to actually find what's going on uh, and what's unfolding. The big weekday show is coming up tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. We have four hours, a lot of time to cover things. Tons of breaking news at Infowars.com. It's so critical to get the new video, special report I put out. The, the United States is now in a state of war with Russia. Let me give you the, the actual uh, headline, emergency uh, message, why the elite must destroy Donald Trump. That's very important in going viral. We've got leftists, you know, firebombing, Republican Center, WikiLeaks email, Clinton campaign wish San Bernardino terrorists have been white. It's all this anti-white agenda just to create racism. Emergency, U.S., Russia entering state of war. That's another special report I shot. There it is. Emergency, war declared on Russia by Soros-controlled U.S. And that's exactly what's happening. I want to make sure it's, you know it's not the U.S. doing this. It's the globalists that have hijacked our nation. War declared on Russia by Soros-controlled U.S. Maybe I should change the headline. War declared on Russia by Soros-controlled Democratic Party. But people need to understand emergency. I'm trying to figure out how you explain that. I mean, they are saying they're going to war. They're launching cyber attacks, physical attacks. All is a big political diversion. This headline, I, I shot a report this morning. Emergency U.S.-Russia entering state of war. That pretty, I mean, that's already been happening. I don't have words strong enough to describe what's happening. Emergency. Why the elites must destroy Trump. They're all up there. Infowars.com right now. And since I mentioned these headlines, let me just give them to you. The Hill. Axelrod. Maybe Clinton should reconsider final debate. Yeah, Trump has devastated her in the last one. We'll be covering it live this uh, Wednesday. Haiti and Africa projects shed light on Clinton's public-private web. Even the New York Times admits what they do. Genrich. 20 media executives are launching a coup d'etat against millions of Trump voters. Facebook, Twitter's all spinning things. Staffers, Obama changed his president but never went Washington. No, he was always New World Order. That's right. This is the incredible stuff we've got here. WikiLeaks releases another 1,054 Podesta emails in part nine of data dump. Total is now 12,073. And in it, it's her at big corporations admitting she lies to the American people. Race baiting. WikiLeaks emails show Clinton campaign collected data to discredit Bill Clinton accuser Juanita Broderick. Targeted her, proving what she said. Hillary email, don't help Savage from UK ban travel ban. We want to do stuff like that here and ban people if they're conservative from travel. See, no judge, no jury, can't own a gun, can't travel. We just said so. Total totalitarianism. Leaked emails reveal Hillary's life of deceit, New York Post. Here are Hillary Clinton's three speeches to Goldman Sachs for which she received $675,000. You'll give an hour-long speech and you get all that money. Bill Clinton gets a million. That's the payoff, folks. And then there's a big report Kit Daniels is writing about right now where it's her top people talking about federal control over foreign lobbyists and selling out U.S. interests. And the headline literally says, take the money from my iPhone. And they go on to say these sorts of restrictions don't really get you anything. I'm just saying take the money and deal with any attacks. I mean, this is just them just admitting they're breaking the law, doing whatever they want. I mean, it's just crazy, folks. These people are crazy. But right now, I want to get to this Kathy O'Brien clip. This is a lady who for decades has said she was abused by government officials 
as part of a CIA program. Well, the Dr. Ewing Cameron program she talks about grabbed more than 20,000 children in the U.S. and Canada. He set up CIA substations all over the U.S. and Canada where they'd grab kids out of their backyards, you name it, or kids would be brought in for a neurological problem. They'd tell the parents we're taking them into state custody. Then they would be reprogrammed, uh, drugged, given new identities, and then sent out as sex bots uh, when they were young girls. We're talking five, six, seven, eight years old, raped brutally, you name it. And she always said that Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, attacked her. Uh, and so I think you have a right to see this. I, I, I know Kathy O'Brien. She has a lot of what looks like damage in her eyes. I think she's a very credible person. I believe she believes what she's saying. So she has a right to be heard. So here is a, a Hillary Clinton, uh, a, a reported uh, sexual attack victim, Kathy O'Brien. It was 1978, and it was determined that I had endured sufficient trauma to carry out my first trial run operation. An enormous quantity of cocaine had been flown in on one of these operations and I was to deliver it into the neighboring state of Arkansas. By that time, Bill Clinton's drug operation was in full swing. He was governor of Arkansas and I delivered this cocaine to a remote airport in Washita Forest, which I've since identified as Mena Airport. I also delivered a little packet of information and a small quantity of cocaine, a personal stash from J. Bennett Johnston to Bill Clinton. I delivered it to Bill Clinton and he cut out two lines of the coke and he did inhale. By the way, the CIA base is confirmed. It wasn't the only time I saw Bill Clinton using cocaine. My sexual experience with Bill Clinton was extremely limited, in spite of the fact that I was a sex slave. It was my experience that Bill Clinton is bisexual, leaning far more towards a homosexual end. All I've ever seen him involved in was the homosexual activity, um, with very limited experience with him myself. Whereas my experience was much more uh, prevalent with Hillary Clinton, because Hillary is also uh, bisexual leaning more towards a homosexual end and it was she who accessed my sex programming to fulfill her perversions now they had these programs and this is when the programs were going on this is congressional hearings were in the 70s all I'm telling you is you want to make up stuff about Donald Trump which has come out in the news has been fake we're gonna go to more credible folks and, and, and bring this information out uh, so there you go. And, and there's more. I'm going to post a full interview up on InfoWars.com. There's a lot of other clips I wanted to get to, a lot of other things to cover, obviously, in the economy. One big reason they want war with Russia isn't just the election. Deutsche Bank, as we told you six, seven months ago, is on the verge of collapse. Now they say that's imminent. That's mainstream news now. Again, how many times we have to be right about Hillary running Al-Qaeda and ISIS, Deutsche Bank getting ready to go belly up, the, the military being trained to confiscate firearms, I'd say the military's bad. They're being given the illegal orders. They're the reason we know about it. They, they play these games. They go, oh, you don't like the military. No, the military's more awake than the public. The point is, this is all going on. National Guard armories are being stocked. Armored vehicles are being rolled in. This is in local news all over the country. Big things are happening. We need to be involved more than ever to make sure there's an awakening and the globalists aren't able to carry this out. We're trying to get our sovereignty back like the UK and Russia and others are trying. That's why we're being demonized and attacked. It's also important to remember, they want to shut this down. Spread the word about this broadcast, the videos, the audio of the show, Infowars.com, and get the Hillary for President shirt, limited edition. We're going to stop selling it in 22 days. It's being sold at cost at Infowarsstore.com. And it's your funding that makes this possible. So I want to salute and thank you all. And great job to the crew. Back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central.